What's up everybody, PC Settings today. Super excited. If you missed the previous tip videos in this series, I recommend watching them first. We've gone through video, like FOV stuff, UI changes, all that jazz, and general gameplay tips that are applicable to every platform. On the last video, I saw some people saying, hey, this doesn't really uh, apply to mouse when it does. And we'll talk about that here in a minute. Before we get into my keybinds, don't just copy my binds. The whole point of PC is it's like the most customizable platform ever. So pick things that are comfortable to you. Now I've played MCC on mouse for the last year and a half, and I also play on controller as well. These are just my particular settings that I like to use when I play on mouse. Hold to crouch, we want to have enabled. Um, that allows you to do the Gandhi hopping technique we covered in the first video, and then also like implement a crouch into your uh, strafe if you need to. Coming down to the sensitivity, I play on 0.6, it's gonna say 0.8, because um, I was just fiddling around with that this morning, but I am generally on 0.6 with a 1600 DPI. The biggest thing with Halo, honestly, is tracking. Like it's super important to track effectively in gunfights. And so the default sense of like 2.0, you're playing on a DPI of 1600 or something, it's insane. Sure, you can like whip around really quick, but when you're trying to make these fine tune adjustments, I'm, I'm barely moving my fingers here and that's like way too much distance. So the big mistake new mouse players make is they don't have a big enough mouse mat, they run too high a sensitivity, and they can't maintain tracking accuracy on their opponents. It's really important that you can trace and track your target, especially in a game that has such a high strafe speed, like, or at least the direction change speed in Halo Infinite is super fast. So use a sensitivity that allows you to track effectively. And sure, it looks super cool with high sensitivity players, and some of them are amazing. Just use what's comfortable. But for most people, I would recommend prioritize your tracking at all costs. For my movement binds, I don't change a ton of things, but the things I do uh, are like shifts that I make with every single like FPS game I play for the most part. So WASD is the same, jump, crouch, sprint, fire weapon, all the same. When we get to use equipment though, I have it bound to my left alt key. So that means I just slide my mouse, or excuse me, my left thumb over to the alt button in order to activate equipment. The importance with this is you wanna be able to maintain like your fingers on the movement keys at all times so that you can kind of direct yourself with the grapple shot or keep moving if you're gonna do a repulsor jump. So if we like look at this corner right here and I just grapple and I don't press any movement, I'm gonna just hit the corner. However, if I grapple and I use my movement keys here, see how I can kind of swing and arc myself out? That's really important to get the most out of the grapple shot. So anyway, that's why I put it on the left alt key. Super easy to use. You can find a spot that works the main concept again. Just make sure you keep your fingers on the movement keys at all times if possible. Melee for F. Throw grenade, I, I think the default bind here is C. I rebind one of the second binds to my middle mouse button. I find that fairly easy to use and it's something that I do in most of my FPS games. Switch weapon for my Counter-Strike buddies is gonna be Q. In Halo, you only ever have two weapons, so swapping between the two of them, you only need to press the Q key. You're just gonna cycle between those two. Drop weapon, I hardly ever, ever use. I put it to the M key and then interact E, zoom level. So like in Halo, if you've got a sniper rifle, and you're playing on PC, you zoom in once, but there is a second zoom level and you can go through that. Um, and you can toggle it just like between the two if you've got the key bound. So right now, if I press right click, press it again, it goes in one more time, press it again, it zooms out. A Little bit different behavior than what some of the MCC players might be used to. But if you press the Z key, you can toggle between the two. It's kind of a nuanced thing, honestly, but just depends if you're on a big BTB map, maybe. Maybe it's like super useful to swap between the two of them. Switching between your grenade types. We talked about this in the last video. I have it set to N, which is the default, and then also two. The two key is what I primarily use. I just reach up, press it, and then switch to previous grenade, not that useful. So AI scan and mark we talked about in the last video. These are two super useful features. I've got them both bound to my side mouse buttons. I have a Steel Series Rival 650 for the mouse I'm using right now. It has two side mouse buttons and I just bind both of these here. And that's really it for what I change. Honestly, the rest of the stuff, you can go and customize vehicles how you want. But what those two features are, and we covered them in the last video, this new ping system is super useful, especially in ranked. Like a lot of people aren't running mics, makes sense. But even if you are running a mic, this is very, very useful. It lets you ping just about anywhere on the map and it shows up in the kill feed. So if there's an enemy over here, or you wanna direct the attention to active camo, you can, you can say, whoa, this guy's over by turbine. Really cool feature. Then there's the AI scan, which we talked about in the last video. This new AI scan, which is down on the D-pad for controller players, also marking for controller players is up on the D-pad. 
Um, this will show you equipment. It'll also show you where weapon racks are, which is super cool. And if there's a power weapon down on the ground, it will actually highlight where that is. So if you can test, say, rockets and everybody blows themselves up and you're like, I need to find it. Where is it on the ground? The AI scan is really useful, man. So start using this in your matches, especially if you're like new to the map or whatever. And you want to know where's the weapon rack? I need to see this still on the BTB maps. There's spots where I'm trying to figure out like, OK, well, I don't know, like, where is the weapon rack? So the AI scan is pretty useful there. Q swaps weapons, which is great throwing grenades. Yay. All good. So I wanted to show this off one more time. BR Weapon Drill 3 is a great place to give this example. Regardless of mouse or PC, like your movement matters huge to your aim. It can make things a lot easier. So in the case of this weapon drill, if you just stand static, you don't move and you're just trying to track the opponent only with your mouse. Sure, it's doable and it's not too bad, but it's so much easier if you actually use your movement keys. So like with this guy, look, how easy it is when you actually implement your strafe into your gunfight man that additional movement makes it so you basically just sort of don't have to track as heavily it's really easy man um and that doesn't really matter if you're on controller or mouse like the concept is still there whereas i'm just trying to teach people you're not a static turret you don't just have to do this you know you want to be implementing movement into the way that you gunfight that's going to do it for this one. If you guys want some more in-depth tips from a gameplay perspective, click the video on the screen. If you found today's video helpful, like it, and I hope you have a very good start to your week.